Hi guys, it's looking more and more like Kemi Badenoch will be the next leader of the Conservative Party. She's been more consistent on message, and while she doesn't seem to be jumping on the idea of leaving the ECHR, she appears to have the crazy wing of the Conservative Party in her pocket when it comes to other policies. However, one of the virtues many Tories see in her is that she's a Brexiteer. And here David Davis, the guy who went to Brussels to negotiate the withdrawal agreement without a pen and paper, explained to GB News why Kimmy Badenoch would make a great leader. Have a listen. I'm here with David Davis, a big and important backer of Kemi Badenoch. Uh, Sir David, what did you think about Kemi's win tonight with the audience? What the generic campaign is saying is that this is an audience in London. We are, of course, standing in Westminster. <laughs> well, I'm from Yorkshire, and I can tell you what you saw tonight, the sort of five to one uh, victory on her side in terms of the show of hands afterwards, you see much the same in the other constituencies I go to in the north of England. Uh, Kemi has an affinity for the party. They feel that she, she believes in the same things they do. You know, freedom, low taxes, deregulation. And what's more, she's done quite a lot of it. You know, best free trade deal since Brexit. You know, she okay, so what he's talking about here is the Pacific trade deal. Um, <laughs> I thought it was Liz Truss that was responsible for that, not Kemi Badenoch. But also, we're talking about a trade deal if you can really call it that, that didn't add 0 0.08 to GDP, but it was actually downgraded to 0.04% to GDP. Nothing. There was another trade deal, I believe, with Mexico that would add 50 million pounds over 10 years. 50 million, not 50 billion, 50 million and then, of course, on the other end of the scale, we have the cost of Brexit, the cost of being outside the single market. She stood up for the, for the post office workers, people's rights. You know, she was the one who, who had the first fight over all the wokery. She was the bravest. <laughs> I think this is going to define Kemi Badenoch's leadership, wokery. You know, we're going to see her in the House of Commons as the leader of the opposition, talking constantly about wokeism, about um, culture wars and stuff like this, it's going to be pretty pathetic. ...person to go out there, in fact the only person who could win the argument at one point. So the, the party likes her and that's, 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 that comes across. Tonight she said that no one has done more for Brexit than herself. Now Sir David, you are a former chief Brexit negotiator, former Brexit secretary for this country. Uh, is she right? Yeah, I'm happy to give her that actually because, because you know, what happened at the beginning of Brexit, Theresa May didn't handle it very well, frankly. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Theresa May didn't handle it right. You went to Brussels and you folded after a, an afternoon. You were the guy who said that there are no downsides to Brexit, only considerable upsides. I'm not sure if it was David Davis himself who said, you know, the day after Brexit, we will be in Berlin, not in Brussels. Well, he was in Brussels and he, you know, he's famously pictured sitting at a table opposite Michel Barnier and Michel Barnier has you know, a massive stack of paper and David Davis is sitting there without even a pen. But because it's all up here in his head, he doesn't need pens and papers and books and uh, <laughs> uh, computers and phones and stuff like that. No, it's all up here in his head. That's, well, it didn't really work out very well, did it? Because he was sacked or he resigned and he was replaced by the wonderful David Frost. Uh, which is why I resigned. But afterwards... Uh, Kemi's the person who's got most out of exploiting the freedoms from Brexit. She's actually negotiated the biggest free trade deal that Britain's ever had, in effect, with, with the Pacific deal uh, and other deals as well with, uh, with Australia and others. So she's Australia and others. Yeah, th these are wonderful trade deals. Just ask British farmers. Don't ask Australian or New Zealand farmers because they will be constantly laughing. Ask British farmers how good the New Zealand and Australia trade deals are for British farming. It's been very dynamic, very effective, and very much across the detail of it, which I don't think many other ministers have been. As Brexit secretary, of course, there were 12,000 pieces of EU law. She only got rid of 3,000 of them. Yeah, she got rid of the right 3,000. I mean, you know... <laughs> 
can we name any of these? <laughs> you know, this was a, another one of the Brexiteers. The ERG and the Brexiteers were demanding, get rid of thousands of EU laws. Could they name any of them? No, they just wanted to get rid of anything that had the word European on it or anything that, anything that came from Brussels in a sense that was negotiated by British politicians as well. We just want to get rid of it because it, it was during a period when we were in the European Union. Do we know what these laws are? No. Do we know the impact of removing them? No. We just, we're wreckers. We're arsonists. You, the way you change laws, you don't just sweep them all out the window and then sort of start designing a new one. You redesign them and then change them. And she did it the right way. I mean, there was, uh, uh, I mean, the ERG, a group in the party, who wanted to sweep them all away, but it would have been actually disastrous because... All the British industry would not actually know what to do. A lot of uh, product safety legislation simply wouldn't be there anymore. If your if your vacuum cleaner or your car broke down and it was the uh, it was the producer's fault, you didn't have any rights. So what he's talking about here, of course, is true, but he's not pointing to the laws that can be bad and not got rid of. Which are they? Can you point them out, David? Surely you, you're you're talking about three thousand. I heard something closer to five hundred, but. If there are 3,000 of these laws that we're right to get rid of, can you point to some of them? Can you give us some examples? Notice he gave examples of laws that were not removed, but he didn't give examples of l laws or rules that were removed. <laughs> it's pathetic. It's a joke. Now, as I said, I think Kemi Badenoch is going to run uh, to the right, of course, of the Conservative Party. She's going to constantly be banging on about wokeness and... Uh, the culture wars, and maybe Brexit. But all of this is a failure. This is not going to win people back. She's correctly suggested that Nigel Farage should not be part of the Conservative Party. That's a good move. You know, trying to, trying to out Nigel Farage, Nigel Farage is not going to work, or try to bring him into the party is just going to turn a lot of people off. And he doesn't want to be in the Conservative Party. He wants to destroy it, uh, you know, according to his own words. So Kemi Badenoch, I think, is going to be a bit, a bit of a placeholder for the Conservatives for maybe a few months or perhaps even a few years. And then she'll be replaced by somebody a bit more competent. Because what, what can she achieve? She's not going to be able to hold Keir Starmer to account. She's connected to failure. And even when it comes to pre Brexit trade deals... I really wish the Labour Party would throw this back in her face because she hasn't achieved anything or she hasn't achieved anything of any value. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.